Hey guys, my name is Vishal and today we're going to be taking a look at the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. This is the 256GB version with 8GB of RAM and I'm going to be telling you about my experience using this MacBook and uh, let you guys know what I like about it, what I don't like about it, uh, and if you guys should actually get this version of the MacBook Pro. So like I said, I have the 256GB model with the 8GB of memory and this model comes in at around $1,700 Canadian or about $1,300 USD. Now that doesn't include Apple Care, which is an, an additional $200 uh, for that extra protection that you get. Now why did I get the M1 MacBook Pro and why specifically this version of the M M1 MacBook Pro? Well, um, one of the, a couple of key features that this has is obviously the M1 chip, which is a huge upgrade, uh, changing from the Intel version from last year uh, to the Apple Silicon version now um, that has boosted a lot of the performance that this computer has um, that MacBooks have in general when you compare to previous generations of MacBook. The next thing that I really loved about M1 MacBook Pro uh, was the 20 hour battery life. And that was a claim that Apple had made way long ago when it was first released in their one more thing Apple event. Um, and they actually delivered on it. It's actually phenomenal. I've, I've had this for about a week now and I've had to charge it once maybe over the entire week. And one of the crazy things is that I, it takes about an hour to two hours to charge, but it lasts close to 20 hours. The next key feature that I really like about the M1 MacBook Pro is the fact that it has this little touch bar right at the top. It comes in really handy sometimes. Uh, whenever you're using an application, it changes the icons on um, on the touch bar so you can reach for them rather than having to move your mouse to click them and it, uh, it provides some really good shortcuts like fast forwarding in, in videos and to, to open multiple tabs. And the last thing that I want to say that's a key feature of the M1 MacBook Pro, especially compared to some things like the M1 MacBook Air for instance, which has the same chip and it has close to that battery life, I think it's 16 hours versus 20 hours for the MacBook Pro. Uh, is the fact that this has active cooling. Um, having that active cooling is almost essential to the performance of this and the longevity of, you know, of a chip like the M1. Um, and I know that there's a lot of innovations that have gone into the M1 MacBook Air, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that little bit of extra money into something that has an active cooling system, even though it is slightly heavier. Now, one of the more controversial uh, topics on YouTube and you know on the internet about the M1 MacBook Pro is which one should I get? Should I get the 256 gigabyte model or should I upgrade my my uh, hard drive or your SSD or should I upgrade my RAM? Now I got the 256 gigabyte version model with 8 gigabytes of RAM and so far it's doing okay. I you know I generally use this for tasks like video editing, photo editing, playing video games checking email, kind of a productivity center, um, and not a lot has, you know, those tasks aren't very demanding. And if you're doing those kinds of tasks throughout, you're, you know, going to school, you're studying, uh, you're creating, you know, Word documents or any kind of documents like that, um, or you're doing any kind of that productivity focused tasks, I think this is enough. I think this will last you and I think it's, enough to be able to, you can have that balance of performance, the cost effectiveness, and you know that it won't, it won't necessarily slow down. Now what about some of the cons? Um, well, one of the things I've noticed is that when I'm using the M1 Mac Pro is that it does tend to get a little bit hot, and I don't know exactly when those fans are supposed to kick in, but it does seem like it's, uh, it's, it's after it gets quite hot. And it's hard to hear those fans. Maybe I just haven't ever heard them turn on, but uh, maybe they're very quiet. So I'm not entirely sure. The other thing that I've found is that when I do try starting up an app, um, it sometimes just jumps up and down for a little bit, just kind of loads or is taking some time to open up. Uh, and I think that's because of the 8 gigabytes of RAM. I know I've watched a couple other videos that say, oh yeah, it'll, you know, it will pop up right away. Whereas I think in this version, there, it does take some time, but usually that's for the first uh, time you open it after starting up the laptop. And after that, it, you know, after that, if you close the, the application and you try to open it again, it opens up right away. 
Now, last con that I have for this is that you absolutely, absolutely need a dongle of some sort to have good input uh, and output with this laptop. It only has two uh, USB-C or Thunderbolt 4 cable uh, ports, and for me, that's not enough. I, you know, obviously, like I need for my camera, for instance, uh, you know, I need a USB input, so I need to have a dongle. So that's something that you guys will need to get if you get one of these. Um, and you know, me being mostly a PC person, uh, I've had to actually go and get one of those as well uh, for it to be compatible and to work with. But it has pretty seamless integration. You can just plug and play that as well, but you absolutely do need to get that if you're planning on getting a Mac. So for $1,700, is this M1 MacBook Pro worth it? Well, I think for my needs, it's more than sufficient. It's the 206 gigabytes of memory, like I said, is not a, a deal breaker. I can always upgrade that or have external storage for any of that, or even you know cloud storage. The eight gigabytes of memory, like I said, some apps are slow on startup. For now, they're fine, and like I said, the first time you open it up, it's a little bit slow, but after that, it, it opens up pretty quickly. So I'm not worried about that eight gigabytes at all, and I'll let you know if that ever becomes an issue. And the last thing, obviously, is, you know, this versus the M1 MacBook Air. I'm pretty glad that I got this version. Again, like I said, touch bar, active cooling, huge things. Plus an extra four hours of battery life, you know, who can complain? So that, I think, is my, my opinion of this after the first week of usage. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you guys are planning on getting the M1 MacBook Pro, let me know down in the comment section below which version you're getting, if you're getting the 236 uh, model or you're getting more memory or if you're getting more RAM, let me know down in the comment section below. And thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.